Follow the Moon Home, a tale of one idea, 20 kids, and a hundred sea turtles. By Philippe Cousteau and Deborah Hopkinson. Illustrated by Milo So. Follow the Moon Home, a tale of one idea, 20 kids, and a hundred sea turtles by Philippe Cousteau and Deborah Hopkinson, illustrated by Milo So. I always need help finding my way, especially in a new place. Before long, you'll feel right at home, Viv. I wasn't so sure. Welcome, Vivienne, called Mr. J. You're just in time for the fun. We're looking for a problem to solve. I got out my pencil and bit my lip. I've rode my bike all over town looking for a problem. Mostly, I just got lost. On Saturday, I took Samson and Luna for a run on the beach. Mostly, they pulled me. Let's make a gigantic hole! I gasped, plopping down. My big digger and my little digger sprang into action. Suddenly, it was raining sand. Looks like fun, but be sure to fill in that hole, said a man walking by. It's nesting season! I smoothed out the sand, and we all went to look. What do holes have to do with turtles? It's because of the babies, said a voice. I whirled to see a girl from school. I'm Clementine, she reminded me. Baby sea turtles need a clear path to the sea. Holes and sandcastles get in their way. I didn't know we had sea turtles here, Samson pulled on the leash. We do. Oh, and look what happened to this baby, cried Clementine. Why were you going the wrong way, little one? Mr. J had told us to use our own eyes, so that night, Mom and I went back to the beach. As darkness fell, we could see bright lights twinkling on, one by one, along the shore. That's it, I said. The lights in the beach houses are the problem. Why is that? Mom asked. When baby turtles hatch, they follow the strongest light they see, I explained. So if they head away from the sea, they get dehydrated and die. My heart sank as I stared at the houses. There are so many. How can we ask all these people to turn off their lights? Most of these houses are vacation rentals, Mom said. That means new people come to stay every few days. We'd have to knock on doors every night. Clearly, I need help to solve this problem, and I knew just how to get it. On Monday morning, Clementine and I raised our hands first. We told the class what we'd learned and observed about loggerhead sea turtles. The sea turtle eggs are starting to hatch, I went on. To save the hatchlings, we need the whole class, the whole town, to help. And that's how Lights Out for Loggerheads began. Our classroom became the Loggerhead Lab. First, we gathered lots of information. We read books. We visited an aquarium and a sea turtle hospital. We asked someone from the South Carolina Marine Turtle Conservation Program 
to speak to our class. We all brainstorm solutions, choosing the best ideas. Then we got to work. We made posters and delivered them all over town. We wrote fact sheets for all the vacation beach houses. Lights out for loggerheads. Let's keep our beaches dark at night. Turn off outside lights and keep curtains closed. Thanks. To pay for printing our flyers and posters, we held a bake sale. Andy, the coffee shop man, donated a whole pan of his famous granola. Happy to help. The editor promised to put my article in the community newspaper. Nice to have a new writer in town, she said. The printer gave us a discount for the loggerheads. Rebecca and Max learned how to spread the word on the internet. Mr. J helped us write a press release. I was on TV as a class spokesperson. We invited volunteers from Scoot, South Carolina United Turtle Enthusiast, to a town meeting. When the big night arrived, the room was packed. The room buzzed with ideas. We talked about how to make our beach a great place for turtles, how to mark nests, run nightly patrols, what to do if hatchlings get in trouble. At the end, we decided to form our own volunteer group. People cheered for our class. Mr. J beamed, I'm proud of you all. That was the best night ever. Until... On the last evening of summer school, we went on a turtle patrol. Lots of parents came too. Everyone smiled as we watched the lights along the beach go out one by one. We had done it. Suddenly, a movement on the sand caught my eye. Over here, I whispered. We crept closer, careful to stay quiet. A crescent moon shone on the waves. The sea glittered like silver. I made out the first one, then two hatchlings. Soon the sand seemed to boil over with life. Tiny turtles, no more than two inches long, burst from the nest. We watched barely daring to breathe. Would they know where to go? Then they were off, scurrying, scurrying over the sand and into the shimmering sea. We stood together, smiling and silent with wonder. Then, just like the turtles, we followed the moon home. Letter to Young Activist When I was a little boy, I loved to go outside. My grandfather, Jacques Cousteau, was a famous explorer and always challenged me to go out and explore the world. One of my favorite things to do was to visit the beach. My earliest memory of the beach is from a trip my mother took us on to Hawaii. Each day we would go down to the beach and explore the tidal pools. We would sit patiently at the edge of these shallow pools of water, not making a sound, and watch as the small fish, crabs, sea anemones, and sometimes even an octopus would go about their business. It was a fascinating world to watch and instilled me with the love of the ocean. Those experiences as a young boy inspired me to explore and protect the oceans as my life's work. Many years later, I found myself walking along a beach in Florida at night, filming a TV show about the ocean. And right there before my eyes, 
I was able to watch baby sea turtles, first one, then dozens crawl out of the sand and down toward the ocean. It is one of the most magical experiences of my life and was one of the inspirations for the story in this book. If my grandfather taught me anything, it was to be curious, to ask questions, and to dream. Through my work, I get to meet kids every day who are curious. Kids around the world who care about the environment and who want to do something to protect it. Like Viv, they realize that they can't leave it up to grown-ups to solve all the problems. They realize that they have to get up and do something themselves to change the world. And you know what? They do. I see kids protecting animals, changing laws, raising money, and more. Kids around the world do amazing things every day, and so can you. All you have to do is, is follow this lead and take five simple steps. First, explore your community. Look around and identify something you care about. The world just looks different to kids than it does to adults. And that's why ideas and solutions that come from you are so powerful. Because you see the world differently and often find solutions where adults don't think to look. Then develop a plan to fix whatever problem you've identified. Research it a little bit. Think about the people, places, and animals that are impacted by it and who might want to help you do something about it. Maybe there are conservation groups in your area or a politician who cares about the environment or a friend of the family who can help. Next, take action. There are several ways to do this. Maybe organize a community cleanup or do some research with the help of a teacher or mentor that adds to data politicians use to make better laws. Maybe you can raise money through a bake sale or get people to sign a petition. Then think back about what happened because of your work. Keep a notebook about who you talked to and what kinds of actions you took. What lessons did you learn? What mistakes did you make? And how did you fix them? Then after you've done that, tell your story. Maybe write an article for the school paper or post a story online. But whatever you do, make sure you tell the world about the great things you achieve so you can inspire other kids to do the same. And remember, you are not alone. Great resources exist to help. My organization, Earth Echo International, is all about helping kids like you to change the world. Visit our website at www.earthecho.org and find out how we can help you. Every day, young people are changing the world, making it better. I hope you find your special place to explore and to be inspired, just like I did when I was a kid. Then stand up, go out there, and change the world, just like Vivianne. I believe in you, Philippe. Two parents and teachers. From climate change to water scarcity to collapsing ecosystems, the news is dire, and youth are often the first to suffer. The problems we face aren't across the ocean or in some faraway jungle. They are in our communities, outside our back door, in our air, in our water, everywhere. While that may seem like doom and gloom, the good news is that the solutions to those problems are all around us too. Every time I see a young person, I see hope. Youth activists, have been thought leaders and change makers around huge issues like child labor, civil rights, equal rights to education, and most recently, issues like environmental justice and immigration reform. Too often, adults see kids only as volunteers for environmental projects, as participants, rather than seeing them as critical thinkers capable of solving any number of problems. What can you do as a parent or teacher? First, believe in your children. Allow them to ask questions and then help them find the answers. 
When kids are empowered to consider problems, gather information, and drive their own activism by what truly interests them, they invent solutions that adults would often never consider. And those solutions and the passion that they carry into adulthood will save the world. For more information, visit www.earthecho.org. Find out more about loggerheads and other sea turtles. The loggerhead sea turtle, Coretta Coretta, can be found around the globe in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Named for its large head, the loggerhead is the most abundant sea turtle in U.S. coastal waters. In the United States, the loggerhead nests from North Carolina to Florida, with more than 80% of the nests found in just six counties in Florida. This story takes place in South Carolina, where the loggerhead is the state reptile, thanks to kids. In 1988, fifth graders from 96 Elementary School wrote to State Senator John Drummond asking him to sponsor a bill to make the loggerhead the state reptile. On May 8th that year, in the Spartanburg Herald Journal newspaper, Senator Drummond said, Every time I go to town or to church, one of those children asks me about the progress on that bill. The bill passed. Loggerheads all over the world are either threatened or endangered, both in the seas and on beaches. That means that while protecting and safeguarding their nesting sites in the United States is essential, it's not enough. There's more to do. From May to mid-August, loggerhead turtle mothers come to shore to dig their nest and lay their eggs. Each nest has 120 eggs on average. The eggs that hatch then hatch in 55 to 60 days from July to the end of October. Volunteers often find and mark nests early in the season during dawn patrols and later nest sit during night patrols to be sure the babies hatch safely. In the sea, the greatest threat to turtles is being captured in fishing gear such as long lines and gill nets. Garbage in the ocean, like plastic bags and balloons, is also a big problem for turtles. On land, loggerhead nests and hatchlings are threatened by beach development and artificial lighting on shore. When baby sea turtles hatch, they instinctively follow the brightest light. On a dark beach, the moon on the water, or white caps on the waves, leads them to the sea. But the bright lights of houses and businesses can cause the hatchlings to turn inland. The life of a baby sea turtle is not easy. They face many predators, but they are doomed before they start if they can't reach the ocean. Some rules for walking on beaches with nesting sea turtles. Don't walk on sand dunes. Don't shine flashlights, no matter what color. Don't take pictures, even with a cell phone. Don't disturb adult turtles or nest, or pick up hatchlings, or get close when nests boil and hatchlings emerge. Do bring the number of your state or local sea turtle conservation group with you and walk to a quiet place to report any problems. Get the whole scoop on loggerheads from NOAA. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is a fantastic resource for facts on loggerhead habitat, conservation efforts, threats, and population distribution. Sea Turtle Conservation in South Carolina. This story was inspired by the work being done by volunteers dedicated to helping sea turtles. In South Carolina, volunteers for SHOOT, the South Carolina United Turtle Enthusiasts, a group of volunteers dedicated to sea turtle conservation in Georgetown and Horry counties, monitor nests and help control beachfront lighting 
that disorients nesting female turtles and hatchlings. Scoot has worked with towns to pass ordinances to limit beachfront lighting. You can help. You can help sea turtles wherever you live. To find out more, visit the Defenders of Wildlife online. Internet resources and links. You can see many interesting net resources and links below.